after shutter speeds, aperture values are more difficult to grasp. Part of the reason is that they are expressed as abbreviations, where the highest value appears to represent the smallest aperture, allowing in the least amount of light to the digital sensor. The lowest value, the most. Turning back the clock again, here are the basic values engraved on the lens barrel of my Agfa Select camera, as shown in Photo Soundbite 2. As with shutter speeds, computerized cameras show additional values, which, for the sake of simplicity, I am ignoring. However, the whole value is expressed thus, and f means factor but specified this way each time would lead to a cumbersome numbering system. Look closer at a lens and the factor value is seen in full. The sequence of numbers may appear unhelpful too, but they have a relevance. For example, an aperture set at f4 is using a quarter of the lens area, f8 and eighth. Therefore, f1 would in theory use the whole of the lens, but in practice an f1.2 optic appears to be the maximum possible. Keeping to the more commonly used abbreviation, f22 on the basic scale lets in the least amount of light, f2.8 the most. As you move down the scale from f22 to 2.8, the amount of light reaching a sensor is doubled with each increment, or halved if going the other way, and the difference in photographic jargon is known as a stop. Therefore, if a photographer is stopping down by one stop using the aperture scale, or indeed the shutter speeds, the amount of light reaching the sensor is halved with each step. By adding shutter speeds to the aperture table, we start to see a connection between them. This is the bedrock of exposure in photography, a basic table still used by highly sophisticated computerized cameras. As presented, the amount of light reaching the sensor for all seven examples of shutter speed and aperture permutations is the same because as you move down from one row to the next, you are halving the value in one column and doubling it in the other by one stop, ending up with the same exposure value. There are further variations that can be added to this table, and one will be added in the next photo soundbite. But the main one to consider now is intensity of light. And that, of course, is where the exposure meter enters the scenario. This can be demonstrated with two similar landscape photographs. The first taken in bright sunlight, the second on a dull and cloudy day. Because the intensity of light on a dull day is less than the image taken in bright sunlight, the camera must increase exposure by either lengthening the shutter speed or increasing the size of the aperture or a combination of both. Otherwise, the photograph will look dark and underexposed. The camera does this for you, but real photographers will choose to take extra control for creative photographic effects, as already demonstrated with shutter speeds, and these will be covered in later photo soundbites.